Hi, I'm Carl Schilling, and I want to welcome you to another episode of Financial Transformation. Uh, my company, the Advocacy Network, to date has helped our clients and, and people who worked with us save over $14 million that would have otherwise been lost to some form of a uh, financial um, victimization. And whether that be fraud, scam, or just manipulative sales uh, techniques, um, we have uh, really helped a lot of people. Now, we're also in the process of uh, establishing a brand new program called the Middle Class Millionaire Plan. And I'm gonna share a little about that today with you just to give you an idea what that's all about. Um, we know that uh, some of the um, uh, financial strategies that the upper class or the higher income arenas have been able to use have really not trickled into the middle class arena. But uh, there are some uh, financial strategies to help you attain financial independence that can certainly be used in um, the middle class. And that's why I created the Middle Class Millionaire Plan. Now, let me give you a little uh, a taste of that so you understand what I'm talking about. It's totally counterintuitive. Uh, you know, it's definitely contrarian. But um, most of the time we look at the retirement industry and, and the retirement industry has been uh, really, really big in the upper, you know, the top 5% um, with financial advisors and things of that nature. But it hasn't trickled down totally, you know, into the, um, into the absolute middle class. Now, there was a time back in, in the past, 50 years ago or so, where most companies had pension plans so that when you were going to work 30, 40 years, you were going to retire under the, uh, uh, the umbrella of a nice pension plan, something that you didn't even have to put away any money for. You know, that was just protected for you. And today, you know, police and firemen and, uh, uh, and certain um, people, railroad, uh, certain people still have that. But most don't. Most companies don't. Most companies went to the uh, defined benefit, uh, uh, <clears throat> defined contribution plan where you had to put money away for yourself. But with all of that, let me share with you a couple of things. First of all, there's a lot of misconception out there, and there's been a lot of miscommunication. <clears throat> so what I'm going to share with you here today is something you probably haven't heard properly. You probably heard it, you heard fringes of it, but you haven't heard it properly. So I'm going to give you the whole story here uh, in a nutshell, if I can. Uh, first of all, you have the equities market, you have the bonds and stocks, you know, that's the equity side of the market. Now, most people in the retirement industry, financial advisors and other people, that's where they're based. They are based in the equity side of things. They want you to be in mutual funds. They want you to buy stocks and bonds, portfolios, managed money, you know, all these kinds of things. And that's where they want your money. Some work on fees, some work on commissions, whatever it is. But that is strictly what I want to call uh, for the moment chocolate. OK, now, on the other side, you have real estate. And then these are people who are real estate investors or, you know, people who have uh, in the industry, real estate salespeople, brokers, you know, who want to invest in real estate. And uh, everything on their world is real estate. You know, nothing else exists but real estate. So that asset base is all real estate. <clears throat> and let's for a moment call that peanut butter. OK, so historically, chocolate and peanut butter are far apart. They never touch each other and they never get involved. Now. There's a third asset base that is totally misdiagnosed. It's been miscommunicated and it's misunderstood fully. Now that third asset base is life insurance. I'm talking about permanent whole life insurance, which has a incredibly bad uh, uh, publicity from a lot of so-called talking heads and so-called experts who know nothing about it because they've never ever really dug into it or looked into using it properly. But it's never been an investment. It should not be considered an investment. It's not like chocolate or peanut butter. It's an asset base totally unto its own, but it has unique properties that can really, really benefit. So if you were to create, say, a peanut butter cup, <clears throat> the uh, foundation that would bind it together would be life insurance. That would be the binding agent to bring this peanut butter cup together. So let's take a quick look at why right now uh, life insurance is the best of the asset bases by, by not even close, okay? So here's why, <clears throat> okay. The equities market is totally overpriced. You know it's overpriced 
uh, because we are in an inflationary cycle and we have a, the only way to, uh, to balance inflation is to raise interest rates. That's what the Fed is talking about doing. Well, there's an inverse correlation between the stock market and uh, interest rates. So if interest rates rise, the stock market invariably comes down and it has to because people take money out, they move money around, the bond market becomes more uh, powerful in that sense. You get a little more return on your money, so people move money around, okay? So the stock market right now is totally overpriced. So if you were gonna have your money in there, you are going to pay, uh, uh, you're gonna be buying high right now. Now, with most retirement advisors, what business are they in? Well, they don't care whether you buy high, buy or sell low, they don't care. They really don't. They say they do, but they don't. They don't, uh, they make their money. Uh, one way or the other. You put your money into mutual funds and uh, they make their money. Now, um, the best way historically, the safest and, and most uh, attractive way to invest in the stock market has historically been index funds. Now, those funds go against the index, you know, whether it's the S&P, you know, or whatever the Dow, whatever the index fund is, is tracking, usually that's the way you make pretty good returns and safe returns, right? Um, you just go up when the market goes up, you go down when the market goes down. But index funds right now are running negative, obviously, because this year has started with the market on a down cycle. So there's going to be an adjustment in the market. It's not a matter of flipping a coin. It's not a matter of reading tea leaves or looking into a crystal ball. Interest rates are going to rise. The Fed has already said for the next seven you know, they want to have as many as seven uh, increases that could take you into the second quarter of 2023. And it's very simple to understand that the market's over, it's overpriced. Now, the, the other side, the peanut butter side, is also overpriced. The real estate market uh, has, uh, has had a surge. It's had an incredible surge. It's been on an incredible bubble. Uh, but at the same time now, um, incomes uh, historically have to keep up with uh, mortgage. You know, to get a mortgage, your income rates have to go up. And that usually tracks up with the increase of the marketplace. However, what's helped this market has been uh, incredibly low uh, interest rates. And those low interest rates have made very low mortgage rates. So very low mortgage rates has allowed people with uh, reduced income not have to worry about the income side so much because they can buy more because the interest rates lower. So that has uh, propelled and fueled the growth in the real estate market. But as interest rates rise, mortgage rates will come up too. And then it'll have to become a classic scenario where income and mortgage rates are more, you know, combined together like they're supposed to be. So uh, the market has slowed. It's going to slow more. And it's going to start to really kind of come down. Now, the other side of that is lumber and cost for materials have basically slowed the building market totally. So the builders are building new homes and things of that nature. Um, either the pricing is astronomical or they have slowed dramatically. Okay. Uh, so that peanut butter side is also very overpriced. So while these two assets are sitting around overpriced, the middle asset, the binding source is life insurance. Now, properly funded, you can fund your own bank with a life insurance policy. Now, if you do that, and you fund that life insurance policy and make it a bank, when these other assets, when chocolate and peanut butter roll back and they come back down into the arena where you can buy low, okay, or buy medium, then you have your money targeted and it's sitting in the life insurance and it's totally, it comes out of the life insurance tax-free and you have the ability to use that money in any direction you want to use. It's your own bank. You can finance whatever you want to finance. And you have to look at this marketplace and say to yourself, uh, do you honestly believe that the overpricing of the markets on both sides, chocolate and peanut butter, do you honestly believe that that's going to change in 12 months, even 24 months? Uh, I think it's safe to say that you're, you're looking at a minimum of three to four years uh, before there's any real um, considerable change. Uh, those are just heavily overpriced. And there's artificial means that people want to keep it overpriced. Uh, and therefore, you know, to have a normal correction um, has been being postponed. Uh, this stock market should have corrected well, well over the last four or five years. It should have corrected and it hasn't because artificially it's been forced not to correct. And because of that, you have an artificial overpricing in a market, which is very, very volatile at this point for you. So... 
Again, I'm going to give you more uh, uh, and actually show you this, but in the middle class millionaire plan, we explain a lot of this and show you how to set up your own bank and why you are well positioned to jump back into the chocolate or the peanut butter market or to actually have a peanut butter cup where you have all fully correlated, you know, and fully diversified portfolios, which includes gold and silver, which we'll talk about another time. So that's my story for today. Just understand that the principle here is this, the markets are overpriced. Chocolate, peanut butter, both overpriced, heavily overpriced. Bad time for you to uh, be in those assets, okay? Secondly, life insurance is a tremendously uh, binding asset that can provide for you uh, a, real, a real growth and uh, tax deferred and also tax-free income coming out of it. Now, however you choose to use that bank, there's a lot of ways to use that bank. You can use it for college funding. You could use it for uh, you know, buying properties and getting back in real estate market, uh, peanut butter, or getting back in the stock market in chocolate, or you could use it for retirement. Uh, however you choose to use it, there's no one way to use it. That's the other beautiful thing about it. It's a totally flexible uh, uh, scenario. It's your bank, a bank, a real bank. And the other benefits of that bank is that if you are not uh, here for your family and uh, future legacy, you're leaving an estate to your future legacy as well so that they can continue on and grow a bank and continue to be in the banking industry. So, you know, the choice has always been there for you. Uh, the people who don't understand this will, will tell you that it's not true and that it's uh, nonsense and it's, uh, it's somehow a manipulation. They just don't understand. They don't understand. This is an industry that's over 200 years old, the life insurance industry. And the proper uses of, uh, of, of life insurance policies have been around forever and ever and ever. Um, but sadly, it's rare that the middle class has ever really been advised or counseled into this because the middle class has always been sold life insurance in the, in the format of term insurance, temporary insurance, or They've been sold on the fact that uh, they want to pay off their mortgage, one single thing, or they've been sold on final expenses, small policy for, uh, you know, funeral costs. That is so um, egregiously uh, wrong that it, it's amazing. But that is really where the middle class has been labeled and stuck into. Middle class can do the same kind of planning and take advantage of the same kind of uh, things that the upper 5% are doing. Okay. And that's what the middle class millionaire plan is all about. So I look forward to speaking with you soon. Um, again, uh, I can always be reached at 321 947 3220. You know, you'll find us out there on the on theadvocacynet.com. And uh, certainly uh, would love to uh, share more with you, but uh, we, we have the book available. We have the financial transformation course, which is an award winning video course that I had done, uh, which gives you a lot of these principles. So, um, again, Carl Schilling, it's been a pleasure. You guys have a wonderful day.